34 past race winners, champions, and other notable Hark alumni are lined up for the five-year Hark anniversary event. And Tristan Woolhoit's got the pole in the number 16 with the 47 of Matthew Engelram to his outside that became his inside briefly. And now back to the outside. Will Hoyt off to the race leap. Faber made it, made it three wide on the start, but is still alongside with Engelram as Will Hoyt pulled away. Hard racing up near the front as Chris Dodd trying to hold off the 15. Also battling with Michael Kane. They make some contact. The 15 of Alex Tanker gets into him. It's going to send a couple cars into the wall hard. The 102 of Shrimp Angus is going to land on our most recent Hark champion, Robert Piet. That's going to take a lot of these drivers out of the race early. Thomas, in the middle of the pack, pushed out three wide, approaching that accident. Still managed to get that car woed up and around Dodd safely. Amazing job by Thomas, and she's actually going to gain some positions through the next hairpin. So, uh, as uh, heading through the hairpin, the 04, the 77 of Bondaranko, and the 58 go off. Uh, they will rejoin further back of the pack as Foyles decides to turn Ellie Nelson in a straight line on the straightaway. And the 96 car is out of the race. And I think we've got another car off. Ellie Nelson wasn't the only car to go off track. Ron Bore with Matthew Stringer in the number 87 machine. The Puni Sanjuro in the number 6 is going to get turned by Stringer. And he's going to spin that 6 car out and go out of the race. This is Michael Caine in the 75. Unfortunately, uh, Michael Caine recently announced that he is stricken with cancer, and so this will be his final uh, Hearth Pro Series uh, appearance. Uh, he will step out of the 78 car, which he was supposed to drive in the International Tour, and will instead be piloted by uh, the three car by uh, the three car's current driver, Luko Brovac. We do wish the best for uh, Michael Caine and uh, hope that he recovers soon. Another issue on the tight bend on the racetrack is Carl and Dumian, car number one, tries to get a little extra on that corner, spins out to number one, but Sam Kernis just pile drives into the back of the one. Not sure what Sam Kernis was thinking there, and neither was Jeffrey Finn guy behind him. Hey, mate, what the hell was all that? 2017 Pro Series Race 1 winner Matthew Engelram has been all over the 16 for the last few corners. Been chasing him down since the start of the race and is now going for an overtake on the inside of this wide sweeping left hand corner. Still alongside the number 16, Spencer Fullerton just in behind uh, following Engelram through potentially no goes down to help Will Hoyt and Will Hoyt's going to hang on to the race lead. Engelram and Will Hoyt still going at it with Fullerton in third. Fullerton had temporarily made it up to second and was actually alongside Will Hoyt. However, Engelram got back by him through one of the left-hand sweepers. But here comes Fullerton up the inside as we head down towards the start-finish line to complete lap one. And he's got the spot over Engelram in behind Will Hoyt as they draft to the start finish line. Faber alongside Engelram to make it two wide. Obrovat ma ma makes it three wide on the bottom of the racetrack, but can't make anything work. Here comes Fullerton with a battle into one, but can't get it done. It's Engelram on the outside. Who oh, we've got a car upside down on the front stretch, guys. Uh, battling for about 20th place, uh, Scott Roush pursues William Duncan with Joshua Michaels right behind. Uh, Michaels looks for a room to uh, race, and it's just not there. Right in front of uh, the Cavalry, he comes the 696. He gets nailed by uh, the 58 car of Matt McIntyre. Massive, massive crash for Scott Roush and Matt McIntyre. Uh, that was a very hard hit. Do hope they're okay. We've actually got an onboard shot of Scott Ralph as he uh, chases the 83 car. And uh, there's the 33, uh, that's CJ Curtis. There's the hook, and he spins right in front of everybody. And that is a violent, violent hit. Flips the car onto its lid. I'm very surprised the camera survived. 
but I do hope that both he and Matthew McIntyre are okay. Back around 15th, a mix of damaged and undamaged race cars going at it really hard here. That's Duncan, Voiles, Tanker, Little John, Nicholson, and Young all going at it. About half of those guys aren't in the Hark Pro Series this year. One of them being the most prolific driver in Hark history, Alex Tanker. It's, it's got to be six or seven race victories. He won pretty much everything that he could in the early years of Hark, particularly in 2013 and 2014. Losing some spots here today. He's got a lot of left side damage. His rear is pretty messed up, and I, I got to imagine that's uh, hampering his speed on these long straightaways. Battle up near the front. Matt Engelram in the 47 trying to get the pass on car number 16, Tristan Wilhoyt. He's got the pull. He's led for most of this event. But now there's a challenge behind them. Tyler Faber in the 900, several-time winner in the Hark Pro Series. And Mark Nutt in the number 78, the English professional Olympic archer who also moonlights as a race car driver in this series. He had the win a couple of years back at Daytona. They're trying to get by for the lead, and Matt Angleram's going to make that extension. He's going to get ahead of Will Hoyt, as Nutt's going to get by the 900 of Faber on the long straightaway. Bit of a draft line going as Mark Nutt trying to catch up. Could it go three wide? Will Hoyt just the door, and Angleram getting loose. Will Hoyt's going to keep the race lead, and Matt Angleram's going to fall into the clutches of Faber and Nutt as they go through that sharp corner. British archer Mark Nutt got by Matthew Engelram for the second spot and has been hounding Tristan Wilhoit. Looked to the outside, Wilhoit tried to block it, but Nutt managed to get his nose in. Had to back off there heading into the clockwise sweeper and Engelram back to the inside and Faber back into third. Engelram inside of Wilhoit there as it looks like Wilhoit might have botched up uh, the corner a little bit. Uh, and Engelram, really aggressive into the next sweeper and manages to get it done on the outside. Phenomenal pass by Engelram as he goes to the race lead for the second time. Andreas Allen racing hard with Nick Pericles. Pericles marks the 39 off the road and into the wall. Not too much damage on the 39 and he will continue, but he does lose a few spots. Angle Ram's going to get back out into the race lead. You see uh, Andreas Allen into the inside wall right back there. We just covered that. But here comes the number 16 of Tristan Wilhoy trying to reclaim the race lead. We've got a five-car battle out front as Tyler Faber in the 900, the 78 of Mark Nutt, and Luca Brovac in the number three machine up near the front of the pack, jostling around for this lead. Obrovac good. These road courses won the Sandown exhibition last year to get into the park finale. Angle Ram, the winner on the oval tracks, holding his own here at the road courses. Here we go. Battled through that final corner, mild after the Charlotte Motor Speedway. On to the final straightaway. Who's going to lead it to the line? Angle Ram with the nose. Car number 16, Tristan Wilhoy, has that draft. But Luko Obrovac is going to make it a three car tandem to the outside. He's going to look out for his own self-interest and make it three wide for third. Here comes Will Hoyt. Will Hoyt leads the lap as Engelram trying to get that momentum. Obrovac going to affect who led that lap. Obrovac not going to get that fourth place position. He's going to hang on. But now there's a draft line around Matt Engelram. Will Hoyt to the lead. Here comes Mark Nutt in the Han number 78 trying to steal second place away from Engelram. Not great on these road courses, so he had a little bit of trouble earlier this year at the Brasstown Bald Circuit. Ah, uh, here comes Angle Ram again in that corner. He's going to split him three wide for the lead briefly, as now is a battle between the Englishman and the driver of the 47. Great battle out front. More cars trying to pile into this. There's the Australian of Fitzwater and the 13, the Kazakhstani driver of Bazanov, making a seven-car battle for this race lead. Mark Nutt to the point. Can he hang on to it? Tristan Wilhoit falling behind, and now they start to line up on the racetrack, fall into order on this long 13-mile circuit. Ilya Bondarenko battles with Prudence Littlejohn for about 20th place. That's Duncan right behind. Uh, Bondarenko has not raced in a couple of years in Hark, I believe since 2015. And uh, 
well, that's decent competition, I suppose, for Ilya, because Bruin Slowchon is not a very good road racer by her own admission. No. And that kind of shows, uh, you know, the time away for Ilya, uh, because he just missed that carousel by a country mile. And now he's delegated back to about 22nd place. And it is the last lap, so I'm not quite sure if he will be making up any more positions. Nut still leads with half a lap to go up through the carousel. It's Nut, Will Hoyt, Faber, and Engelram and Fitzwater going for fourth place. Tristan Will Hoyt, car number 16, is going to peek out of line on this long drafting section. He's going to try and steal the lead back from Mark Nutt. Mark Nutt's going to slam the door. He goes for a slide. 16 does the crossover move. Side-by-side -side action on track. Faber's trying to figure out who he's going to go with. Let's we'll say he's going to go with the guy on the inside line. But Mark Nutt, a little bit of momentum coming out of that downhill corner. He's going to retain the race lead. As Mark Knight leads the field through uh, the banked corner, they've got about one-third of the lap to go. Will Hoyt. Will Hoyt's going for uh, the lead right now. He uses the slipstream of the 78. Rare to see slipstream and work on a road course. But Will Hoyt, this might be the, the last time we see the Denali Tanana that Will Hoyt's running. They're going to be bringing in the chase soon as Will Hoyt chases for the checkered flag. And he goes around on the outside of the 78. As Saber, I think, was expecting um, Nut to uh, be faster through that corner and was drafting him. That's not going to work out. And uh, the 900 tries to ditch the 78, but that doesn't work out either. As now they're nose to tail, uh, coming through the last couple sections of this track. Woolhoit's got just four corners to go to hold off Nut and Saber. They got together there. Battling for a second, it looks like, has not got real squirrely through that corner. Here comes Saber up the inside. If Saber can get by him now, he might have a shot at Will Hoyt. Down the final couple of straightaways. Will Hoyt still holding on to the lead. Got a couple of car lengths advantage heading into the Charlotte-themed corner as they continue racing side by side right behind. Just out of camera shot. Nut. Looks like he's going to get by Faber, but does he have enough time to run down Will Hoyt? Very long straight away ahead. Lots of space to draft up to Will Hoyt. Does the Denali have the horsepower under the hood to hold off Nut down the straight? Nut's closing with some help from the 900. Is he going to get there in time? He goes alongside the 16, but he can't get there at the line. And it's Will Hoyt with the five-year Hark Anniversary Special Victory. Mark Nutt, just a tenth of a second off of Will Hoyt at the line, led most of that final lap, but came up just a bit short. It's Thaber with the third place position, as that's Duncan off the road. With some help from Finn Guy coming to the line, that's, well, that's going to be an interesting talk after the race between those two drivers. Uh, anyway, Henrietta Fitzwater, fourth place in the number 61. Luko Brovac got fifth. Bejena, the eternal road ringer, finishes sixth. Matthew Engelram, challenged for the lead early, but ends up 7th at the end. Fullerton, 8th. Doan returns to Hark for this lone event and manages to get ninth. And it's Pericles rounding out the top 10. Are you kidding me? Well, someone isn't happy. 